Hello, welcome to NAB 2017. My name is Tim Siddons from Blackmagic Design. This year at NAB we have a huge announcement with a new version of DaVinci Resolve, version 14. There's three huge improvements that we've made to DaVinci Resolve 14 this year. First thing is its performance. We've gone away and rewritten the video render engine of, uh, of DaVinci in order to increase its ability to work on slower, low power, power, power platforms, but also to increase the, uh, the usability of the tool, to make it faster, to make it snappier, and to make it easier to work with. We've included with version 14 a whole new collaboration tool that allows DaVinci Resolve to be used with multiple users in large post-production organizations where you have editors, colorists, and audio engineers all working on the same project. And the other big announcement that we have this year for DaVinci is the inclusion of the Fairlight audio engine within Resolve. So the entire audio engine for DaVinci has been rewritten. So whether you're working in, as an editor in the edit page, or whether you're working as an audio engineer using Fairlight tools, that entire engine within DaVinci is now based around that historic and well-respected Fairlight audio engine. Um, I think for us as a manufacturer, HDR isn't new. Uh, we've been doing HDR for a long time. Um, everything that we've always done has been about high dynamic range, um, right from the very beginning. And when you look at some of the products that we have, like Resolve, HDR is already an integral part of that. Um, there is still some variation and fluctuation that happening in terms of HDR standards. Um, and at the moment, I think a lot of manufacturers are latching onto HDR as a, a marketing hype and buzzword. With Resolve 14, we've completely rewritten the video render engine in order to um, maximize performance both through CPU and GPU in combination. So, for example, we've, uh, we've optimized our performance with, uh, with CUDA OpenCL. Uh, we've also included Apple Metal support within DaVinci Resolve 14, and that as a platform then gives us the ability to continue to improve in performance using some of these technologies. But then we've also improved the code itself in order to ensure that the multi-threading that's going through the CPU is going through as quickly as possible, as fast as possible, and as efficiently as possible. Our expectation is it's probably going to be about four weeks, um, but we need to get the beta out there so that our customers can have a look at it, get used to the interface, get used to working with it, and also feed back to us anything that they may have seen in terms of any issues with the software. Most individuals that are using the free version are standalone or, or boutique in environments where it's one user with one station. Um, so as a result, everything we can put into the free version is there, um, including all of the Fairlight tools and also the optimization that we've included in version 14. The big difference when you step up to Studio is that it's designed to work in a studio. So in an environment where you have multiple users working on the same project, whether that be a video project, an audio project, or both, then all of those collaborative tools are available in the studio version. This year at the show we've announced a massive price drop on the studio version, whereas previously it was $995, it's now available for just $299. So it makes it much easier for you to increase the number of users that are working together on a single production. Biggest frustrations I think customers had when working with a, on a mobile device, and we're seeing more and more customers working on laptops or MacBooks. Um, on mobile situations, maybe they're working on set, uh, maybe they're working in a cafe or coffee shop, and they're going through an edit, or perhaps they're looking at doing some effects. Um, even doing a color grade, a basic color grade for distribution uh, over the web. And so a computer screen becomes a suitable device for then judging what that image is going to look like. But as a result, customers needed to have a look at what that image was going to look like full screen. So now with Resolve 14, pressing Control F will give you multiple options for how you want to view the image that you're working on. The first press of Control F will give you a partial full screen, but still allowing you to see the effects dialog. So if you are working on any visual effects, if you're applying any special effects to the image, you can do that um, using the partial full screen uh, window that Control F will provide for you. Pressing it again will give you then an entire full screen view 
of the grade or the edit that you're working on. So you can use that then for preview purposes or indeed presentation purposes to anybody that, that you're showing your content to. Of course, when you do that, that also hides some critical information when you're working on in the grade, um, particularly your waveform monitors, your RGB parade, which you may need to see. So we've included the option by right-clicking on the image when it's at full screen to also add your scopes over the top as an overlay on, of, of the full screen view. The Pocket Cinema camera has been one of our, our, our most favorite cameras. I, I love the Pocket Cinema camera because I love the images that come out of it. Um, the challenge that we had with the Pocket Cinema camera is that the next obvious step is to move up to 4K. But in order for us to maintain the image quality, both the high dynamic range and that beautiful look, that filmic cinematic look on a 4K sensor in such a small device, it creates a huge amount of heat. And to, to generate that beautiful image, to capture it into a, a professional codec or a raw codec um, from a small sensor is incredibly hard to do in such a small device. So the biggest challenge we have is finding the combination of device size and sensor um, that enables us to put together a small 4K package. And currently with the technology that's available today, there isn't a suitable sensor that gives us that quality image in a package that's so small um, without generating too much heat. So uh, at this moment in time, it's uh, definitely something we would like to do, but there isn't really the technology available today to do it. So it's, it's, it's a wish, um, it's something we're constantly looking at, and it's a popular question, but right now it's not something that we have complete. Bluetooth was something that we added into the SM Mini Pro when we, when we designed it. Um, and we, we didn't make a, a big announcement about it, the Bluetooth feature because we weren't too sure exactly how we were going to utilize it. But we knew that there was an opportunity to do something with, with the Bluetooth on the SM Mini Pro. So it's kind of a hidden feature. There's one of those things that we've hidden into the camera. Um, this year at the show, we've enabled the Bluetooth. And we've also launched a software application that allows you to control the SM Mini Pro over Bluetooth. That software application is free, it's on the website. Um, you can run it on an iPad, and it will give you core camera control. So things like uh, focus, iris, shutter speed, metadata control, information about what's happening on the recording media, um, and also the ability for an, uh, a camera assistant to start uh, adding metadata into files um, and changing metadata information for files that are about to be recorded. Now that, that tool is designed so that it makes it much easier to use the camera for multiple operators. It also means that you can use the camera in remote situations, perhaps up on a crane, and you can still control the camera using a Bluetooth wireless app on a, on a mobile device. But importantly, we haven't kept it closed. We've opened up that Bluetooth protocol. So on the website, we've published the API and an SDK, um, and also the uh, uh, sample code from the application that we've made. So that if you wanted to make your own application to control a Blackmagic camera over Bluetooth, you could do. All of the code is open, it's there, it's on the website, and you can download it and you can write your own apps effectively to con control the, the Ursa Mini Pro.